the collection, the archive has been sitting since, almost since my father passed away, which is 20 years now, um, in a, in a lockup. And um, I've spent the good last 10 years trying to figure out what to do with it. And the family has been, obviously we don't want to leave it sitting in a lockup, slowly getting damp and degrading. And we needed it to go somewhere, some place that would look after it. And um, the University of Cork, their, what the programs and the curriculum that they have on offer mirror um, so many of my father's interests. They have a school of uh, film, school of theatre, school of drama. Um, they the fantastic literature programs. And it seemed as though this dovetailed with um, what his passions were. We felt that it was important that this archive go to Ireland and specifically go to Munster. So um, this has worked out for the best. And you know, in the first, and in honour of my father's connection to Limerick, it was important for us that the very first public showing of it be in Limerick. So it's going to be um, the first opportunity people get a chance to look at it. It's going to be at the Hunt Museum in Limerick. And what I'm excited about is that people will, will get an idea of just how what a kind of renaissance man he was and how varied his interests were um, because it represents not just what you would expect uh, of him in terms of his interest in his professional career as an actor but also his ambitions as a director we were just looking at something in there where he has a, um, a prompt but put together of what would be his um, uh, director's copy of the production of Hamlet um, he, he wrote tons of poetry um, he enjoyed um, writing letters to friends and to editors of newspapers and magazines and there's some good zingers in there um, and he collected an awful lot of personal memorabilia which um, as we were talking about earlier I, I wasn't aware that he was that sentimental and I don't mean that in a pejorative way it's heartwarming to me that he considered these things to be valuable and things that he wanted to hang on to and collect. Um, that said, they were all just in trunks and the bottom of drawers and stuff like that. So they weren't preserved in a way where one expected that he was sort of going through them himself. They were just mem memorabilia of his life that he, he wanted to keep with him. Um, he was deeply proud of his Irishness. Um, and he never let anybody forget it, that he was first and foremost an Irishman um, and a Limerick man. Um, what, what impact did he have? I mean, there, there, was, there were many great Irish actors on stage before him, but there was never a, a leading man, a film star, a, a male film star. Maureen O'Hara, of course, um, was a huge star, but a male leading man, he was the first. And he also, he broke through at a time when he, it was, he was in the right place at the right time. But pr prior to that moment happening in the late 50s, um, after the, uh, the advent of John Osborne's Look Back in Anger, prior to that, people from his background would be playing um, walk-on parts. Um, um, but with the advent of that play, working class characters could become the subject of a story of a film or a play, a piece of theater. And um, that gave him the opportunity and people of his ilk, like um, you know Albert Finney and Peter O'Toole to break through, you know. I, in terms of career advice, he was very helpful. Um, but the, the only advice he, he ever gave about acting, I remember was I'm driving in a car with him and he's, he's visiting me down at Duke University and he suddenly proclaims, he goes, acting. I'll tell you what acting is, Jared. Acting. Acting is. Acting is to act. And I just went, that's no f***ing at all, man. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought I was about to get gold there. And he argued me. But, um, but, you know, actually, as I've gone through life, I've understood just how absolutely simple and true that statement is, you know, because on some level you can get in your own way with too much thinking and thoughts and the mind games you play. And at the end of the day, you just have to let go.